I walked the line. Uh, right. Folsom Prison Blues. <laughs> I will continue to look for that basket. Yeah, if you don't have it, that's...
Thank you, Rachel, for the beautiful music welcoming us to worship on this Lord's Day. Glad you could all join us as we gather together to celebrate the good news that Christ is risen, the living Christ who comes to us new every day. Our opening hymn is Christ the Lord is Risen. Let's join in. The screen will have the words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we hear an hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's risen from the grave, just like he said. Special welcome today to our guests and visitors. Glad you could join us. We welcome those streaming online and those dialing into our worship today also. We have a tremendous privilege today of baptizing. It was going to be a dozen children, but I think it's nine, which is still quite a day. Uh, Peyton, Wilson, and Aiden couldn't make it for some reason, so we'll get them next time. But I want to address first the uh, baptismal families and then all of us as we renew our baptism today into Christ as we hear these words. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose resurrection from the grave is a sign that God's love wins out for you, for me, and for all the world. So now I'll ask you parents, godparents, and all of us to join in the renewal of our baptism. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all of his empty works, and all those things that draw us from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. And do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. And now, parents and godparents, do you promise to help your children grow in the Christian faith by teaching them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Commandments, placing in their hands the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God, Bring them to the services of God's house. Bring them to the Lord's Supper and help them to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, answer, yes, with God's help. Yes. And congregation gathered as the church today, do you promise to support these newly baptized children and their families 
with your support in word and deed. If so, answer yes with God's help. Yes, with God's help. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for washing us in the waters of baptism by giving us new life, claiming us as your sons and daughters forever, and putting the sign of the cross on our brow to remind us that we belong to Jesus forever, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Amen. Thanks to Karen for helping with the service today. Okay. Uh, will the parents and sponsors for Emmett Nelson please come forward? You could bring them right over here. We're going to dip them. <laughs> <laughs> Baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Emma, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And Karen's got a lit candle. Let your light so shine before others that they might see your good works and glorify God in All right, Leah Ann and Eli Schultz and their sponsors and parents, please come forward. Who's first? Uh, we have Leah Anna. Leah Anna? Leah. Baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And let your light so shine before others. Who's next? Eli. Eli, all right. Eli baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son. Holy Spirit. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Eli, let your light so shine before others. Our next baptisms are for Carly and Adeline Anderson. Please come forward. And parents and sponsors. Who's first? Carly. Carly, all right. Carly, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let your light so shine before others. Who's next? Adeline. Adeline. Let's see, are you going to be able to get your head over there? Somebody's going to help me. Don't tip her upside down, Pastor Guy. <laughs> no, this is good. Adeline, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ forever. There you go, honey. And let your light so shine before others. And now we have the parents and sponsors for Keaton, Xander, Malachi, and Kenzie Anderson. Keaton gets to go first. Who is it? Keaton. Keaton's first? Yep. All right. I 
baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ forever. And let your light so shine before others. Xander is next. All right, Xander. Xander, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let your light so shine. Malachi? Malachi. Sounds like a prophet. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Malachi, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And let your light shine before others. Kenzie. Kenzie? <laughs> All right. Kenzie, I baptize you today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And remember to let your light so shine before others that they might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, if all the baptized will stand, and congregation join with me in saying we welcome you into the Lord's family, into the mission we share. Face the congregation, please. We welcome you into the Lord's family and into the mission we share. Let's thank the Lord for these prayers. I would just like to take a moment to address all the families and the friends of these people who were baptized. God works in mysterious ways, and he works in the right times. Our church and our community needed you today. This was a wonderful gift that you've given to everyone. Thank you. Yes, as, uh, yes thank you. For those viewing in or dialing in, Shatek and Cameron have been reeling from the uh, sudden deaths of two of our finest police officers, Hunter and Emily. So to celebrate new life today, like Karen says, is a gift from God. So thank you. Bob, what are we going to sing? I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. That's number 860. that harmonica there yeah that was nice hey any kids here yeah there's kids come on up come on up kids <laughs> come on down I want to talk to you about gold today. 50 years ago, I know I, I look too young, don't I? <laughs> My wife gave me this gold ring as part of our wedding day. She probably got it 50 years ago for 
maybe $200. You know what it's worth today? Probably 1000 Would you like to have it? No, you can't. <laughs> I can get your ring, but it wouldn't be this one. Uh, this is special, made out of gold, which is one of the great. Where'd it go? That's just like anything in this world gold, silver, you name it, it doesn't last forever. What lasts forever? Anything? How about God's love? How about faith? that God gives us, like in the baptism today, one of the blessings is faith. And we're going to hear about it in the readings where St. Peter writes, your faith is more precious, it was behind your ear, than gold. <laughs> Think of that. Our faith is more precious than gold. And it's tested by fire, like gold comes as a rock and then they have to fire it. So your faith is going to have tests. You're going to have hard times. But God works through those to make our faith grow. And here's a little song to help us remember that. It goes like this. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire compares with you. Let's try it. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Beautiful than diamonds. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire compares with you. Now we're going to change it around and think of the Lord singing to each of you, to me and all of you. Think, singing, child, you are. Child, you are more precious than silver. Child, you are more costly than gold. Child, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire compares with you. Let's pray. God, we do worship and honor you more precious than anything and thank you that you see each one of us so precious that if we were the only ones on earth, you would come for us again to die and be raised again. Bless these children, all the children around the world today, to know your love in Jesus' name. And all God's kids said, Amen. Thanks, kids. Bless you as you go off to Sunday school. Thanks to Bonnie Hallberg for reading the good word today. The first reading um, this morning is from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Now we will read responsively Psalm 16. I'll read the odd. 
Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delights is in the godly, that you are in land upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. They will not pour out drink offerings to such gods. Never take their names upon my lips. O oh Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. Boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because God is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not be abandoned me in the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We'll sing, sing them. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. The Gospel this morning is from John 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where all, where all the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. It's that time in the service for Name That Tune. But don't name it till after I've played it. I thought love was only true in fairy tales. Meant for someone else, but not for me. Love was out to get me. That's the way it seemed. 
disappointment haunted all my dreams. Then I saw his face. Now I'm a believer, not a trace of doubt in my mind. I'm in love. You got to go, ooh. I'm a believer. I'm a believer till I die. was out to get me that's the way it seemed disappointment haunted all my dreams then I saw his face now I'm a believer not a trace of doubt in my mind I'm in love now I'm a believer I'm a believer in Jesus Christ I'm a believer. <clears throat> yeah, thanks to Neil Diamond and the monkeys who covered that song. I changed a few of the words. You probably caught that. I saw his face. Like Mary Magdalene, that first Easter, saw the risen Lord and she became a believer. Like Peter, James, and John, and the other disciples, they saw his face. They, they became believers. Like, wait a minute. Except Thomas. He was, out doing, he was out fishing or something, and they said, we saw the risen Lord. He said, no way, no way. He's dead. He's been dead three days. No, we saw him. He said, nope. Unless I see him and touch his side, his wounds, I will not believe. You ever been there? I don't believe until I have proof in the pudding. Well, guess what? God showed up a week later. Thomas saw him, touched him. He said, my Lord and my God, which was a way of praising Jesus. And then the Lord says, you've seen and you believe. Blessed are these Shetekians who have not seen me and yet believe. So how do we come to belief if we don't see the risen Lord? And maybe you have. You'd be a rare bird. But how do we believe if we don't see? Through our eyes of faith. St. Paul writes in Romans, faith, more precious than gold as we know, comes by hearing the word of God. That's why John writes in his gospel, as we just heard Bonnie read, these things are written so that you might believe Jesus is the Christ and by believing have life in his name, the word of God. So today we have a recipe for faith right here with the baptisms. We heard the charge to the parents, godparents, to all of us. Learn the Lord's Prayer. The creed, the confession of our faith, the commandments that give us guidance. Place in our hands the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God. Come to the services of God's house like we are. Come to the Lord's Supper, the other sacrament of our church where God says, I love you just the way you are, and I'll never leave you or forsake you. You are mine. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit marked with the cross of Christ forever. And then, of course, we promise to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Like Hunter and Emily, who gave their lives to keep us at peace, to keep us safe. Just like Jesus says to all of his followers, take up your cross and follow me. What does that cross represent? Death, suffering, sacrifice. Jesus said, whoever follow me must deny themselves and serve others. That's what it's about in following Jesus. Your faith, which is a gift, as Martin Luther reminds us in the small catechism, I cannot by my own reason or strength come to believe, but the Holy Spirit, through baptism, calls me 
enlightens me with his gifts and brings me into this crazy, beautiful thing called the church. So when little Emmett is baptized today, he can't speak for himself or reason the theological truths of the faith. That's why it's such a beautiful sacrament to say, this is about God giving us faith. It's not about me saying, look how strong of a faith I have. No. I'm pretty weak, actually. Some of you know that. But we worship a powerful God who can use weak people like me to share his word. Exercise your faith is what Peter is saying in the tests that we go through. How many here exercise daily or weekly? That's a good thing, isn't it? Paul says bodily exercise is a good thing, but a far greater value is spiritual exercise because we know these bodies wear out but the Spirit goes on forever. So exercise your faith by trusting God today for your life, for your finances, for those hard times, for maybe asking God to give you boldness and sharing with others Christ's love. Exercise that love, the greatest commandment Jesus gave us, love one another, that your cup may be full. And of course, exercise that thing called hope by sharing with others that today might be in darkness or despair, that there's hope in Christ, not only for this life, but for eternity. So, Lord, give us faith today for the journey, faith for the hard times, faith when we worry. Faith in you, Jesus, hear our urgent cry. Give us faith for the living and faith for that day when we must die and awaken to see you in glory. And all God's people said, Amen. All right, Bob, what's cooking next? I heard the voice of Jesus say, All right.
Let us join together today in confessing our faith in the words of the creed as printed on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we rejoice today that you're alive, that you've risen from the grave 2,000 years ago, and you come to us anew every day. Especially we thank you today for the gift of our baptism. We thank you for the Holy Communion, your body and blood, and we confess before you and one another that we have sinned, we've fallen short, and thank you that by your death and resurrection you forgive us and bring us everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, hear the cries of your people who mourn today, especially the family and friends of Hunter and Emily, our community, Shatek and Cameron, and others who suffer violence. And pray, O oh God, for, for comfort, for healing, and give us the grace and, and, and courage to speak out against evil to work for that which is good, and to hear your command to love our neighbor as we love ourselves for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, bless this church and your church throughout the world today, especially where there's persecution and oppression. We pray for all people today affected by hunger and famine, by thirst. We pray for all the sick and the dying and the grieving. Pray for those caught up in war and violence. Pray for the homeless, the refugee, and use us, O oh Lord, to be instruments of your healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, tend to those we know to be ill and hospitalized today, those facing and recovering from surgeries or undergoing treatments, those who are ill at home. We pray for Daryl Skog, for Vicki Anderson, we pray for Pastor Bob Berg and others we name before you today for your healing, your strength, and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. All these things, O oh Lord, whatever else you see would be good and wholesome for us, grant we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we'll receive our offerings unto the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we offer to you what you've first given to us, ourselves and our time, our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who gave his life for us in the world, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who in the night in which he was betrayed took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And then after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. For Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again for you and me. Let us pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to receive the communion today. You'll be ushered up in two lines, receive the uh, bread. There's gluten-free wafers in the center of the tray. There's wine or grape juice in the center of the wine tray. You could put your empty cups in the baskets as you depart. Please be seated. Communion stewards, please come forward.
Let us pray. We thank you, almighty God, for this healing gift of life, the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to forgive us and heal us, to strengthen us and keep us in your grace, and at last bring us to everlasting life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us with favor and give us and the world you made your peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So sign with me. I'm a child of God. I am loved by God. Now don't elbow him too hard. I'm not alone. Thanks for joining us today to be part of the worship, the celebration, joining in the communion, and of course, the prayers for, for Hunter and Emily and their families. And God bless you as you do what you can to do the good, which overcomes the evil. Uh, announcement here, Dave Dobbs, who's been the property manager at Luther Park for 25 years. They should give him a silver watch, don't you think? 25 years. But they're going to have a special spring work day, April 22nd. If that doesn't escape me, that's this coming week. And then they're also going to try to retire the debt. They have a 200 some thousand. The first 25,000 will be matched by a donor. So if that works out for you, they need some help. There's coffee and uh, donuts downstairs. You're welcome to join us for fellowship. Is there adult study today, Jim? Down in the office, uh, Bible study. Come on up, kids, for the closing song. Grab your instruments. Give us a little tempo there, Rachel. Come on down.